The night air hung heavy with anticipation as I stood outside the dilapidated movie theater, its crumbling facade a testament to its once grandiose past. The marquee flickered ominously, casting eerie shadows on the deserted street. I shivered, not just from the chill in the air, but from the inexplicable sense of foreboding that gripped me. My name is Alex, and I'm a freelance journalist with a penchant for the macabre. When I heard whispers of the dark history surrounding this old theater, I knew I had to investigate. Little did I know, delving into the depths of its past would unleash horrors beyond my wildest imagination. The theater, known simply as the Grand, had been a staple of the community for decades. Built in the early 1900s, it had seen its fair share of glory days before falling into disrepair. Nestled in the heart of the city, it was once a bustling hub of entertainment, but now it stood as a relic of a bygone era. As I stepped through the creaking doors, a musty smell assaulted my senses, mingling with the scent of stale popcorn. The lobby was dimly lit, the faded wallpaper peeling from the walls. A lone ticket booth sat in the corner, its glass windows fogged with age. I wasn't alone in my exploration of the Grand. With me were my companions, Sarah, a fellow journalist with a penchant for the supernatural, and Marcus, a seasoned photographer whose skepticism often clashed with our curiosity. Sarah was petite with piercing blue eyes that seemed to hold secrets untold. She had a way of getting under your skin, her curiosity matched only by her fearlessness. Marcus, on the other hand, was tall and lanky, with a perpetually furrowed brow. He preferred to rely on facts and evidence, but even he couldn't deny the eerie atmosphere that permeated the theater. Together, we made an unlikely trio, drawn together by our shared fascination with the unknown. Legend had it that the Grand was haunted by the spirits of its past patrons, souls trapped within its walls for eternity. Tales of strange occurrences and unexplained phenomena had plagued the theater for years, but none dared to investigate. Until now. According to local lore, the theater's original owner, a man named Samuel Blackwood, had made a deal with the devil himself to ensure the success of his business. In exchange for fame and fortune, he had promised the souls of all who entered his theater. Z.A.'s, the story goes, Blackwood's greed had consumed him, driving him to madness. He had vanished without a trace, leaving behind only whispers of his dark pact. Armed with nothing but our curiosity and a few dimly lit flashlights, we ventured deeper into the bowels of the Grand. The air grew colder with each step, the darkness swallowing us whole. The auditorium was a cavernous space, rows of tattered seats stretching out before us like the gaping maw of some ancient beast. The stage loomed ominously at the front, its velvet curtains drawn closed. As we explored further, we began to notice strange symbols etched into the walls, their meaning lost to time. Sarah traced her fingers along the faded runes, a look of unease crossing her face. This place gives me the creeps, she muttered, her voice barely above a whisper. Marcus scoffed, though I could see the tension in his shoulders. It's just an old theater, nothing to be afraid of. But even he couldn't deny the sense of unease that hung in the air like a shroud. It wasn't long before we encountered our first sign that we were not alone in the theater. A soft whisper echoed through the darkness, sending a chill down my spine. Did you hear that? Sarah asked, her voice trembling. Before any of us could respond, a figure emerged from the shadows, 
its features obscured by darkness. My heart pounded in my chest as I reached for my flashlight, the beam illuminating the face of a young girl. She couldn't have been more than ten years old, her eyes wide with fear. Please, she whispered, her voice barely audible above the hum of the old projector. You have to help me. The girl's name was Emily, and she had been trapped in the theater for as long as she could remember. She spoke of strange apparitions that lurked in the shadows, their whispers echoing through the halls at night. As she led us deeper into the theater, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. Shadows danced along the walls, twisting and contorting in unnatural ways. Suddenly, Marcus let out a cry of pain, stumbling backwards as if he had been struck. I rushed to his side, my hands shaking as I checked for injuries. What happened? I asked, my voice trembling. Marcus shook his head, his eyes wide with fear. I don't know, he whispered. I felt something, cold like hands grabbing at me. As we pressed on, the truth behind the theater's dark history began to unravel. We discovered secret passages hidden beneath the stage, leading to hidden chambers filled with relics of a forgotten time. It was there that we found the truth about Samuel Blackwood and his pact with the devil. His greed had unleashed a darkness that threatened to consume us all. But even as we uncovered the secrets of the Grand, we knew that our ordeal was far from over. The spirits that haunted the theater were restless, their whispers growing louder with each passing moment. In a desperate bid for survival, we raced to find a way out of the theater, our footsteps echoing through the empty halls. But no matter which direction we turned, the shadows seemed to follow, twisting and shifting like living things. As we reached the lobby, a sense of dread washed over me. The doors were sealed shut, the windows barred against escape. We're trapped, Sarah whispered, her voice choked with fear. But even as despair threatened to consume us, a glimmer of hope emerged. In the darkness, I spotted a small door tucked away in the corner of the lobby, its hinges rusted with age. With renewed determination, we pushed open the door and stepped out into the cool night air, leaving the darkness of the Grand behind us. As we emerged into the light of the moon, I couldn't help but glance back at the theater one last time. Its crumbling facade seemed to leer at us, a silent reminder of the horrors we had endured. But even as we walked away, I knew that the Grand would always hold a place in my nightmares for in its shadows lurked a darkness beyond imagining, a darkness that would haunt me for the rest of my days.